Basic Battles Tabletop Games to Kids Hello gamers, Matthew here from Grey Army Gaming in Loon, Sweden. For this video, I would like to share with you something that I've been working on that I'm calling Basic Battles. Now, I've got two boys who are five years old and seven years old who really want to play tabletop wargaming games with their father. Now, unfortunately, games like Warhammer Fantasy Battles, 40K, even Warcry are still a bit too complicated for them to understand the rules. They lose some interest after a while if the games get too long. So I've decided that I would go ahead and try to construct my own rule set for basic battles um, that one can use in order to play small skirmish games with kids who are five, six, seven years old who are just on the cusp of coming into wargaming but for whom wargaming uh, games such as Warhammer Fantasy Battles or other skirmish games seem to be a little too complicated. Now I've gone ahead and made this really streamlined set of rules that draws on elements of uh, skirmish games and even Dungeons and Dragons. And what I love about basic battles is that there's really no specific figurines that you need in order to play. Um, we have been playing with dinosaurs, for example, in something I'm calling Dino Wars. Uh, we've even played with dragons in the confrontation of dragons. I was even speaking with my son about the possibility of setting up a scene with streets and buildings and playing with cars. Um, there really doesn't matter what kind of figurines you use because you assign the same values um, to all of the figurines. You give them the same life value and the game mechanics are exactly the same for each of the figurines. So what I'd like to do now is to give you a brief run through of the rule set. Uh, how you play these games and I will show you then uh, a few different ways to set up the skirmish game and Hopefully you'll be able to take these rules and go off and play some good games with your own kids All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the rules for basic battles The beauty of basic battles is that you really don't need that much stuff in order to play First of all, you need some sort of setting in this case. I'm using a 30 inch by 30 inch battle mat uh, with some water and some forest. I also set up some trees to make it look a little more realistic, but you really don't have to go that crazy. Uh, you're going to need some figurines. In this case, I'm using dinosaurs, and these are all just dinosaurs that I pulled out of my kids' playthings, so I didn't have to actually go purchase any new figurines for this. So we're going to play a dino battles here. You're going to need some measuring sticks because we're going to be using inches now for moving and charging. You need some D6s, the orange ones you see up on the top there, which are for marking wounds. You need some D12s in the middle there for movement and some D20s for attacking and defending. Other than that, this is all you really need. To start the game off, you just decide how many players are going to play. I've played with two players, I've also played with four, I've even played with six, um, and it's really fun with a lot of people. So this is a game that can incorporate the whole family, all of your kids if you want. Once you figure out how many players you have, you figure out uh, how many figurines each person is going to have. We could say in this case that we're going to have four players here and each of them get one figurine. But there's no reason that you couldn't play with four players, each with two figurines. Now once you figure that out, you figure out just how many wounds you want each of your figurines to have. In this case, I've played every time. We just give them six wounds each. So you just use your D6 and set it there with the figurines, marking them at six wounds each. And then you divide these figurines up amongst the players. Once we've decided now how many figurines and how many players, the players go ahead and each of them rolls a D20 and the highest number gets to decide where they deploy first. So this person who rolled an 11 will begin and they get to pick one of the sides of the four sides of your battlefield. And what they'll do is they'll deploy with the back side of the model touching the edge. So for example, if we're playing two players with two figurines, I might deploy them in this fashion, touching the back edge. Once we're deployed, the players then go ahead and roll off again to see who gets to have the first turn. Highest roll, 17, begins. Because this is a simplified game, there are really only two phases. There is the movement phase and the combat phase. Now for the movement phase, there are two things that you can do, and that is simply make a movement or you can charge. Now, in order to do this, what you'll do is you'll pick out one of your two figurines. We'll take this guy on top, for example, and we'll say, I'm going to move him. And now in order to move, you will roll a D12, and this will be your movement die. And whatever that die shows, in this case an eight, you get to move eight inches. And here you can move in any direction you want. 
you can move up to eight inches. You don't need to move the full eight inches, but up to eight inches. And this is really important because this is where a lot of strategy comes in for how you can surround the other players and their figurines. So moving is, is really important and it's, it's important that it's done in the right way. We've moved that guy and now we can move over to this guy. And let's say we actually want to charge. Let's go ahead and place a dinosaur here and show you what a charge would look like. Now, if we want to charge, we would point to this dinosaur and say, we are going to charge on here. Now, what's exciting about this game is there's no pre-measurement, so you don't really know how far you need to go in order to charge. But we know this, that it'll be something between 1 and 12 inches because we are using a D12. So we declare the charge here and we roll our D12. In this case, we got 10 inches. And 10 inches is actually too far for us to be able to make the charge. We can't come into base-to-base -base contact. So we set down our measuring device, and when we charge, whether or not we make the charge, we still have to move in the direction of the, of the figurine that we are charging again. So here, we will go have to, have to move this guy up his 10 inches, even if it brings him right there. We don't make a successful charge and we failed. If we had rolled an 11, for example, or a 12, then we would have made the charge. We put the guy base to base and then we would have a combat there. To summarize, then we can say this, that in the movement phase, you can either move, and if you move, you declare that you want to move, roll your d12, and then move up to that number of inches in any direction, or you declare a charge, and you declare who you're charging, and then you roll the d12, and follow through with that number of inches in the direction of the charge. If you make the charge, you're ready for combat. If you don't make the charge, you have to move that number of direct, uh, inches in that direction. And this now brings us to the combat phase, the second of the phases. And there's really only one way you can get into combat, and that is by charging or remaining in combat if you were already in combat. Now let's continue with this example here, saying that this guy was able to charge into this dinosaur. Now the benefit of charging is that you always get two attacks when you charge. We'll say it's because you have momentum or you have movement and the force, so you always get two attacks. So you roll two attacks for your charging, in this case, a six and an 11, and the person who is receiving the charge rolls one d20 defense die, a 19. So in this case, neither of these attacks beat a 19, so nothing happens there. Let's say that the attacker had rolled a 15 and a 19, and the defender had rolled a 17. Well, in this case, one of the attacks, the 19 got through, the 15 did not, so that means that this dinosaur suffers one wound, we'll move him down to five. And just like in Dungeons and Dragons, 20s are considered critical hits and they do twice the amount of damage. So let's say I rolled two 20s here and the defender rolled a 17. Well, that would be two damage for this one and two damage for this one, which would be a total of four, dropping this dinosaur down to a total of two wounds. And you can see that is then a very successful charge. In this game, we always re-roll ties. So if one of the die is a 20 and the other one is an eight, if this defender rolled an eight, well, the 20 would get through and that would be a double wound, but the eight, we would both have to re-roll our two die that tied and we had another eight and a 16. So this uh, would be able then to avoid that wound. Having now finished combat, we go over to the other player's turn and that player now can begin with the movement phase. To begin with, we will declare a charge with this dinosaur onto that one, and we will roll out our D12. And we got 11 inches, so that will be a successful charge, no problem, and he will come crashing into that dinosaur. Now, the player has an option here of either stopping there and deciding not to move this dinosaur, leaving that dinosaur in combat, um, if this dinosaur weren't in combat, he could charge or move it around. But there's also another option here. If you're in combat, you are in fact able to leave combat, to pull out of combat as part of your movement. And the reason you might want to do this is to give this guy a better strategic position or maybe to charge another dinosaur that's uh, over here or maybe in another battle or a conflict. Um, so you always have the option of leaving combat. And you can do that um, once again because very often when you charge, uh, you will do a lot more damage if you have your two attacks. So you always want to try and be charging into combats because that gives you a clear advantage. Now here's the thing, if this guy wants to pull out of a combat and he's engaged, this is also like Dungeons and Dragons, that what we get to do is this guy can pull out and I will end up rolling a d12 to see which direct or how many inches he can pull out. In this case, we've got 12 um, and he will come out of the combat in this way, 12 inches, any direction I want. 
But now this guy also gets an attack of opportunity, just like in Dungeons & Dragons. And the way this works is we have the attacker roll one die and the defender roll another one. In this case, I rolled a 17 and an 8, so he is able to get out of the combat without taking any wounds. Same rules apply here. If we roll a 20 when this person is drawing out of the combat, that would also be two wounds. There. Another important rule, if you're going to be pulling out of this combat here and you want to charge, say, this other dinosaur, it's really important that when you are doing that, you declare that you're going to leave the combat and charge this dinosaur. So when we do that, he'll get an attack of opportunity and he'll be able to charge over here. And we will first roll here for this attack sequence and then roll to see if he will make it into that charge. In some cases, however, you will just want to remain in contact. For example, if this dinosaur has one wound left, then there's no reason to leave there. Let's just keep the combat going. That will be the end of the movement phase for this dinosaur, and then we will head over into the combat phase. Once again, in this case, this dinosaur charged in, so he gets two d20s for attacks. I rolled a two and an eight. The defending dinosaur rolls an eight. We tied there. So an 18 and a one, so that is actually one wound. That would be enough to kill him and we remove him from combat. And the game continues on in this fashion until you finally are able to destroy the last figurine, whether it be dinosaur, dragon, car, etc. And obviously then the last one standing is going to be declared the winner. Uh, this works just as well in games of uh, two people where you're playing against each other. It also works in a free-for-all game where you might be four, five, six, ten people. The king of the hill, the last one on the table, is the one that is declared the victor in this game. Just a couple more rules to wrap this up. When we start the game, whoever rolls to begin, let's say it's this person, this player who gets this side of the board, after that person starts um, deploying, then you move around, in this case, clockwise, this person gets to deploy, the next person, and so forth. And then the same thing after you roll, whoever gets to start first, let's say it's this person, then you go around clockwise, and each person in their turn gets to make their movement and combat before moving on to the next person. Now in the games that I have played, where we have between four or six figurines, usually I found that it's a good number of wounds to have six on each figurine. That gives you about a 15 to 20 minute a game. But another variation which I played which is also really fun is that instead of having six wounds on a single figurine, you may have say 10 figurines each of which have one wound. In this case, it's a lot more strategy in the movement phase, how you charge in, how you wrap around, what kind of distance you keep from other models. And when you have say four players with 10 figurines, it becomes a crazy skirmish game that is really exciting. One more rule that I've come across in game testing is this. You may be uh, charging with this guy and in fact declaring a charge on him, but this guy is actually on the same team as him and he stands in the middle of these two. Now it is not really possible to charge around a guy. In fact, you will have to charge directly into him if your line of sight, your line of charge goes directly through him. And that actually might be good for this guy because when you roll your d12, maybe I didn't have enough distance to get to him, but I do have enough distance to get to him. Regardless of what I would roll, if I'm able to get into this guy at least who is in my line of charge, then I need to stop there and the combat will be there. Were I, however, to be a little bit off and I would have a direct straight line of charge, well then I can declare a charge on him and try to get up there. However, if I do miss and come up short, then I'm going to be in quite a vulnerable position because the next round, these two will both be able to charge into me. Well, there you have it, folks. A quick run through of the rules set for basic battles, a simplified version of tabletop wargaming that you can play with your kids who might be four, five, six, or seven years old who aren't quite ready yet for other tabletop games, but who really want to dive in and play some fun games. And you can go ahead and play with your dragons, you can play with dinosaurs, you can play with cars, you can play with other figurines, anything you can find. Throw it down on the table and have a great time with your kids. Well, thank you for joining us here today at Grey Army Gaming for the future of gaming.